subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Monica, we're speaking, of course, on the heels of this new announcement um, that Netflix has just made. It is, uh, of course, an, an announcement of the new slate. It's eight um, films and series uh, that are lined up, which I assume will drop um, in the next couple of months. Uh, Monica, how confident are you feeling about this new slate? Uh, thanks for having me, Rajiv. I'm feeling extremely confident about this slate because, and uh, these are eight new uh, films and two new series, but overall there are 17 exciting originals that we are bringing in the next weeks and months on Netflix. And uh, uh, I'm very confident that each of these stories is special and unique in its own way and will find the audience, uh, you know, that it's talking to. And it is catering to several diverse moods and tastes. And that is what we've tried to do together as a slate on Netflix India, is right. to get stories for every kind of, uh, you know, consumer and every kind of mood. You know, until now, Monica, um, Netflix, certainly as far as the original space was concerned, uh, Netflix was sort of competing with Amazon Prime Video, if you like, ju just in the series space. But in a COVID world, it feels like the market has certainly opened up for straight to streaming movies, you know, acquiring films that are, that are now going to go straight to streaming. Um, so Amazon and Hotstar are now acquiring films to go straight to streaming, which sort of puts, puts them directly in competition again with, um, with, 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 with Netflix, um, with your commissioned and acquired films. Are we in that space? Are we then going to see bidding wars? Is it going to be about who can, uh, you know, who can shell out the most to acquire the, the, the most um, exciting titles? Rajiv, actually, you know this. We've been making premium yeah. original uh, films for a long time and we've been invested in films ourselves for a long time, whether in India and globally, as you've seen. So uh, for us, it is about the best stories that can come from anywhere and uh, that will find their home on Netflix. We are not into, uh, you know, really sort of getting into any sort of a war. I think we are all, as streaming services, we are all doing our best, getting the best stories that work for our set of consumers on the service. And we are entirely focused on that at Netflix. You know, despite the obvious uptick in, in viewing habits, and I would imagine viewing ours during, uh, during lockdown and since COVID, isn't it also true that a certain kind of Bollywood film will not go straight to streaming. Um, you know, the tentpole kind of film. I mean, uh, films like Surya Vanshi, films like 83 are holding out for the cinemas to reopen, which sort of gives streamers the reputation of being a platform for the small or the mid-budget films. Is there an effort to change that impression, both by acquiring the tentpoles and by commissioning them? You know, Rajiv, I really fundamentally f feel that uh, different... Uh, uh, kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, content are suited for different mediums and mm -hmm. at different times. So I, I, you know, I think it's, it's kind of false to look at stories of as big or small. We really try, try to put them in these boxes and rate them, etc. I don't think, I think it's the, it's the value of the stories. It's not the scale, the perceived scale. Like who is to say that uh, a small charming story coming from somewhere, uh, you know, with a new cast cannot become and really uh, take over, uh, you know, the zeitgeist and really delight people. So I think big or small is something and, and somehow it just becomes that there are some conversations which declare it as big or small. There are so many more people who actually watch and most of the time, you know, the most highly watched pieces of, uh, uh, you know, uh, content or stories are actually not the most heavily talked about. I mean, there is no correlation so many times. So I think it's about the value of the stories. I truly believe that. You know, but filmmakers who have taken their films straight to streaming um, during COVID, certainly, you know, where they've had to sort of recalibrate and, and say that um, the time is right to take these straight to streaming and you've, and you've acquired some of those. Um, they've been emphatically saying that, that their films are meant for the big screen. This is just a temporary measure. Now, if that remains the mindset, then, then what have the streamers really achieved? I think... Uh... <laughs> I would say that it's not about, uh, you know, being in a race to achieve something. Uh, I think the, the creators have themselves, the creative partners are very keen to bring these stories on streaming services 
and uh, you know to find a home there everybody's uh, the entire creative community is a stakeholder in this and these are tough times people are looking for inspiring stories people are looking for entertainment and at that point in time to be able to you know give a a platform and a service where these stories can come and really reach the consumers not just in india you know across the world i think is a very very important thing everybody who's a stakeholder in this journey understands that and fundamentally i think that uh, all all the right stories will find the right medium and time for them so that is something where uh, i don't think there's a, dis a dissonance everywhere and uh, whichever stories uh, uh, are meant to come out at a certain time in a certain medium will will beautifully come out there you know when it comes to original series um it feels like netflix hasn't had the big breakthrough hit after sacred games and say delhi crime um you know in the way that in the way that say patal lok has for uh, for amazon prime video uh, or even panchayat or even arya for hotstar it feels like the big swings um you know leela bard of blood betal uh, selection day didn't quite pop in the way that something like patal lok did i know that i know that none of the streamers give out actual data so it's it's so i can't back my uh, i can't back up my argument with with actual numbers but in terms of but but you know in the absence of figures what you rely on is perception um, and it feels like there hasn't been a hit the size of of patal lok for netflix uh, is that a concern uh, that's not at all a concern raji we are always actually aiming to do better and better and in fact i don't know how but you forgot to mention jamtara it was That's a right. very big hit it got so much uh, consumer love and critical acclaim she has been in tyaz ali she has been a very defining series for us guilty has been a very uh, big film for us so uh, i feel that like i was saying earlier you know uh, we try to uh, drive this correlation between watch and conversation it mm. it is true at certain times but it is not true uh, at most other times many more people watch and love uh, uh, you know these series and these films than actually go on social media platforms and talk about them and also what happens is that uh, you know from a from a, a even reviews perspective what mm. usually happens is that there is a certain uh, kind of uh, uh you know flavor or kind of storytelling that is appreciated by a certain set of people but consumers love many many different kinds of stories and i think netflix uh is not about a single title that's where we are a little different uh you know from all other services because we are globally and in india also the value for our consumers goes beyond a single title we are a service which is about multi title which is about finding your uh, kind of titles your netflix title every night of the week uh, right. you know that's what we are about and wherever it may be from the world wherever it may be from india you know the kind of films you look at our top 10 list every day every day you'll find global titles from a german series spanish series korean film indian films and series every single day you will see how much of uh, you know how many indian films and series are being watched and sometimes they stay as number 1 for weeks so that should uh, you know tell you what people are loving on netflix you know the first season of sacred games was uh, definitely better reviewed and received than the second season the actors have said that if there were plans to do a prequel uh, or a spin off that they'd definitely be on board is sacred games as far as you're concerned as far as netflix is concerned is sacred games over and done with or is that door still open you know and i must say uh, to your earlier point i uh, i loved season 2 i was a viewer then i was not at netflix i really loved season 2 also okay and uh, but sacred games is actually a very beloved franchise it's so zeitgeist the the characters people can even even in these times everyone quotes there are so many right. memes so that's a universe and a set of characters and space that we are uh, it's much loved and uh, um maybe we'll come back okay you know you've announced um in, in, as part of the new slate you've announced that netflix will be streaming a suitable boy which is of course uh, mira nair's uh, mini series based on vikram seth's best selling novel um that's a prestige title but it is a bbc production so i'm i'm assuming that this is a, a licensing deal is this um only india or is this all territories barring uh, england uh actually it's uh, all territories barring us and canada 
Ah, okay. So, yes, yes. Okay. So, and this will be uh, dubbed in Hindi and it will be available to everyone to see. It's a, it's a uh, you know, it's a defining book. It's one of the top, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, pieces of literature across the world. It's a wonderful book and it's, a, it's an equally wonderful series. So, we are really looking forward to that one. It's got an amazing cast. It does. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's one yeah. to watch out for. You know, Monica, Netflix has this great tradition, certainly internationally, um, for incredible non-fiction content. I mean, the, the unscripted uh, is, is a great uh, treasure trove, really. I mean, things like uh, between the documentaries and the miniseries, whether it's Making of Murder, whether it's uh, Wild Wild Country. I mean, these are, these are uh, some of your prestige titles. Is unscripted not a huge priority in India? I know that you've done, uh, um, you know, uh, it's, but it's so far in your unscripted space, it seems like it's driven by celebrities. There was a show that Karan Johar hosted. You've now announced a reality show that Masaba Gupta will, uh, you know, is the star of. Um, where are the documentaries? That's a scripted series, actually. Masaba ah. Masaba is a scripted series. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Masaba plays herself. Okay, and, okay. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, no, we are actually very uh, excited about our unscripted lineup also. Uh, we, uh, there's a lot of work happening there. We have a, a very interesting range of content that we have there. Uh, and uh, yes, there will be uh, uh, documentaries also. There will be unscripted formats. There'll be reality television. So there is all of that in the works. Yeah. So um, you will hear of it soon. Okay. You know, the threat of censorship sort of rears its head every now and then, doesn't it, Monica? When it comes to OTT, uh, multiple FIRs and complaints that were filed against Patal Lok kind of re-triggered that conversation around regulation for streamers. I know that Netflix and Hotstar signed that self-regulation uh, code last year, but it has been, it seems like there's been this constant chatter uh, that the government will draft a regulatory uh, framework for the streamers to follow. How do you negotiate this tricky space? Um, Especially given that Netflix has been about, you know, preserving the voice and the freedom of the of the filmmaker. Uh, what we're doing is, Rajiv, uh, we are working with a lot of industry peers and we're working with the government also uh, to eventually make sure that the consumer has, uh, you know, the freedom to choose what they want to watch. We are very mindful of the maturity ratings of the content. We put trailers we put synopsis, very clear synopsis on the service with every uh, creative work that is there, with every story that is there. So we are working with uh, uh, the industry, uh, you know, to come up with something which preserves both the choice and control of the consumer and the artistic freedom of the filmmakers. So I feel that the creative community also has a voice and we are all extremely mindful. So uh, we are working towards a set of best practices that we can implement. You know, I'd imagine that you had multiple shows and films in production when COVID and lockdown happened. Um, I know that most of the streamers are uh, certainly for the shows and films that were that were that had already been shot. Um, that there are practices being put into place for uh, for completing post production remotely. Um, what happens? Is there a blueprint? Is there a plan? Does one know what's going to happen with the films that were midway through shoot? Because I would imagine that the pipeline will dry up at some point if if um, you know if this period lasts longer. And is that a concern? Uh, actually, I'll, I'll actually answer this both ways from an India perspective and a global Netflix perspective. So from an India perspective, we are all aware there is massive, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, disruption externally. We are all going through, you know, it's an evolving situation. So, uh, you know, we are all keeping our ear close to the ground. We are all helping our crews and teams to uh, come back up in production and uh, we have a lot of content, as you see, the 17 originals that we've announced, yeah. which we are, uh, which are ready. Some of them, uh, you know, are re immediately ready to roll out. Some are in advanced stages of post. And from a global perspective, a lot of the productions have come back with care and caution. So I think for now, uh, we are doing well. We have a lot of titles and I'm really hoping fundamentally for everyone and not just from a streaming perspective that the situation changes because it is also a question of livelihoods of a lot of people of and course. we have to be responsible about that. Finally, Monica, do you see viewing habits change drastically post-COVID? Um, do you think that people might just want to spend more time outdoors and not in front of uh, screens and, and, and television sets once, the, once they can? See, I think there won't be a one or the other. 
there are two things which will of course we all want to go out and as we should and we are all looking forward to it uh, i also feel that the surge that we are seeing right now is uh, yes a little temporary and uh, uh, but also i feel in the midst of all of this the the great thing that has also happened is that a lot of people uh, have experienced uh what premium storytelling is what it could be to have different kinds of stories to explore to discover to enjoy so i think that is something which is also a new habit forming right. so i'm hoping that uh, it's the best mix of everything that we see on the other side of this right monica shakel thank you this is uh, you know it's an exciting slate i see titles you know i see films by anurag basu films by alankrita shrivastava this this is a really um, interesting kind of slate that you're putting out looking forward to you know a, a mix a mixed bag as you promised uh, and, and and more power thank you thank you and rajiv wonderful that you're finding the slate exciting that's extremely heartening thank you Great. so much